We saw the coordinated Obama call this morning yeah. with Michelle. And I mean, we know that Barack Obama didn't do much for Joe Biden. You were kind of imagining now, does he hit the trail again for Kamala Harris and really shake the race up a bit and make it a different race than we were in when we were both in Milwaukee at the Republican convention? I think that they have to be very careful. Uh, they're already in the we're overhyping a personality phase. And Donald Trump is doing a fantastic job of calling her a San Francisco radical and giving the whole list of who she is. When Obama and and uh, when President Obama and Michelle Obama come out and they start doing too much of the personality driven thing, I think it's going to backfire on them. We're already kind of sick of it and we're seeing it. And that's all they do. They're not talking about policies. They're talking about, you know, oh, our friend. Uh, you know, yeah, just our best friend. We can no. just say, here's what she stood for. Here's what she's done. Here's why it, it's horrible. Then you'll yeah. notice what she did, which I thought was unbelievable. She started running on her California record. When I was the attorney general, this yeah. is what I did. And Forget I was about like, the last one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. girl, that's not what you need to be doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need People to don't be, love it there. You need to be talking about, you know, how you somehow were a moderate or you did something. But, you know, borders are Kamala Harris. Is there going to be a debate? We don't know. I think that, I think it throws all of that off. And that's going to have to be renegotiated now between the campaigns yeah. because this is a new campaign. But like you said, it shouldn't have to wait to a debate. If you're fair media, if you're going to do your Lester Holt interview, if you're going to do these interviews, you should get questions about that. I mean, these because they, these are the issues, Rick, she has to deal with if she becomes president on day one. She actually should be dealing with them right now, too, as a vi- as vice president to a president who is not able to really carry out the job. So she she should be able to easily answer these questions. In, in She's front, getting the best info of everybody who's running. I want to see her off script. I want to see what she can do just simply by talking about the issues. Does she even know what she's talking about? Yeah. I don't know. When the bar, though, like you said, is so low and there are Democrats who are just excited <laughs> that she's not going to call Zelensky Putin. I mean, <laughs> legitimately, like that's the breath of fresh air they were looking for. Yeah. When you see the response, that's people are like, wants. wow, people are really excited. I'm like, they're just excited that they're not going to be completely embarrassed just by those kind of things. And though it's a low bar, I mean, she isn't, she has not been particularly, she was not the Kamala Harris I saw before she was vice president. I saw her a little bit when, during the impeachment because we were on the floor of the Senate. You're in California where she, definitely put forward a much tougher demeanor. I mean, she won statewide races in California, and that's not an easy thing to do, even inside the party, but then got to this Biden White House and started spiraling. So the question yeah. is, does she continue to spiral, or is there another Kamala Harris that comes out because she no longer has to deal with this Biden team? I think that's what Republicans are kind of worried about, maybe, a little bit, because she obviously made it to the highest level of politics yeah. still. But let me let me, let me me assure you, yeah. as a California. Yeah. She has never been vetted, yes. ever. She, we have a system, uh, remember, in California that one party controls everything. The LA Times, Sacramento Beat, no one vets her. The shooting changed a lot of things because you saw a different kind of Donald Trump speak a little bit differently, a little more personal, which I think was good to hear. Bad that what happened, but good for people to see the other side of him that you don't always see when he's in fight mode, uh, in political mode. And then... Then we had the convention that went great, and then Biden steps out, and it's Harris they, that they choose because there was talk about other people potentially getting that. And a lot of people were like, wow, Harris, interesting to, to stand behind her, but she's got all of the big Democrats. So, I mean, there's been there's been more shifts in politics in one week than I've seen in my life. Yeah, me too. It's, it's really unbelievable. But uh, let, let's be clear, Joe Biden was shoved out yeah. by the elites. After getting 14 million votes from the Democratic process, yep. they tossed all that out. They said, every state, you voted for Joe Biden, even though we told you that he was fine. He wasn't fine. We duped you. You voted. And now we're tossing that out. We're going to shove him off the stage and going to make sure that it absolutely just goes to the vice president. Now, I have a lot of Democratic friends who are not happy about that. Yep. They're going to suck it up and try to get behind uh, Kamala Harris, but they know deep down inside she is a radical San Francisco Democrat. Yeah, which is not how Joe Biden ever, even if he was putting forward policies like that kind of through his team, and the more and more he was losing control, the more and more it seemed like those policies were being put out because what he said and what the administration was doing didn't really match up. Yeah, uh, Like on Israel, he has always been a lot 
stronger support of Israel, but the team was putting out other things that were not so supportive. You'd see the other spokespeople say something totally different. Like you said, this is San Francisco, California liberal. That is, that's about as far left as you could describe someone in America. Joe Biden was always kind of trying to be the moderate, as you're saying. And when he picked Kamala, he picked someone to appease the far left base. The far left base is a problem for them, but they are solidly in control. And so they needed to have somebody. Now that they've elevated the woman, who is literally the epitome of the far left base, they're going to try to pick a VP that's more moderate, but the policies now completely shift. They go from the moderate Joe Biden to the actual far left radical. As the vice president for four years, as a full term, she never was really talking about big economic issues and the you know inflation. She might just generally have a statement about it or go on maybe in a speech and have something written out that said, but she obviously wasn't in the room writing the policy and her team wasn't either. Uh, so for the for when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to the economy, I mean, really tough issues right now, hard issues. We don't know at all. Not really. We kind of know where her views are, but not the how the, she would implement them. Look, or she, she is could. totally inexperienced on the economy. <laughs> she is completely inexperienced on foreign policy. Yeah. She loves to talk about social justice, yeah. and and honestly, Which she is, is very v- VP kind of role. Yeah. You know, it's like you're it's fine. You talk about those other issues that the liberals like and the left likes, but I'll actually run the you know, my presidential team will run the country. Her record alone is so far left and, and a San Francisco crazy radical. All we have to do is put her own words out there. We don't have to talk about her style, we don't have to talk about her laugh, we don't have to talk about any of this uh other stuff. Yeah. What we have to do is focus on what she believes about red meat and insurance and cops and the open border. There is a long list that, of things. She's ruined it for herself. Yeah. America is not that crazy, wacky San Francisco radical. Where are we in this campaign now? I, I know that you're going to be with President Trump again uh, tomorrow. Uh, he obviously, we know we've got the vice president. We know J.D. Vance is out there. We've got President Trump out there. He's hitting, you know, he, he didn't slow down at all. No. Uh, from what happened, and we're still, you know, trying to figure out what happened with the shooting. But he hasn't slowed down his campaigning or in traveling the country and meeting with Netanyahu uh, later this week, uh, tomorrow, um, or today, today actually. Today. Yeah, yeah, in Florida. Yeah, I think it happened. Uh, and and yet, you know, we also have seen a new presidential candidate come forward that didn't have to win a nomination. I think President Trump is really energized. I talked to him the other night for a long time, late night, and it was clear that he was focused on. What are the next steps in this campaign? He loves to get information. How are we doing in different states? <clears throat> what are you seeing on the ground? And he's constantly asking questions. So he's fully engaged, and I think he's picking up his schedule to to show at these rallies. And that's one thing that we have to talk about. He's going to do more rallies despite the fact that they tried to assassinate him. Well. And let's just let's just pray that uh, the Secret Service learned their lesson and we don't have any more problems like we had. Absolutely.